Hello, everybody. God bless you and welcome back to the Fueling Station. It's good to have you on today. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes. I hope that you are letting people know that we, the Fueling Station, are here Monday through Fridays at 1030 a.m. and also on Sundays at 230 p.m. Please set it in your phone so that you can get a notification and you won't miss the broadcast because we are on part five of the series called where is the water and we know the word of god is awesome we don't want to have a drought or a famine going on because we want to have the word of god churning on the inside of us amen so with that being said go ahead and grab your bibles please grab your bibles because we want to read and study for ourselves we're going to pick back up in first Kings chapter number 18 and verse number 22. Um, I'm sorry, not verse number 22. We're going to go a little bit further because uh, we are on part five of the series. So we're going to start with verse 32 here in this word. The title of this series is called Where is the Water? Because water, I want you to remember this symbolizes the refreshing of the spirit of God. Water represents God's presence. And wherever there is water, there usually is vegetation or green grass. Israel, this story is about Israel, God's chosen people. They are in a famine and in a drought because of their disobedience. But God is desiring for them to repent and come back. You know, many a times when people or nation has gone astray, God will do something to get their attention. And so this drought was a sign of judgment of their behavior of worshiping other gods. And so in the story, the prophet, the God, the man of God that had uh, adhered to the word of God and stayed serving God in a nation that was wayward, this man literally was preaching to them about God and how they needed to come back. And so in the story, there was 450 prophets that was uh, wayward from God that had used their gifts and their uh, talents that God had given them to prophesy for Baal. But this one prophet named Elijah was a man that stayed with God. And God is calling for us to challenge us to stay with God, no matter how many people are doing it the world's way. Even in the church, God is calling for the one, the remnant to stay standing for what is right. And so in this word, there was a challenge that Elijah presented before them. He presented the challenge for them to um, to do it their way. We, he said, this is going to be the challenge. You call on your God, I call on my God. They had many of gods and he only had one God. There were many of them and it was only one of him. And so when they called on their God from morning, noon and evening, he, they didn't, their gods didn't show up. And so now it's Elijah's turn to show Israel uh, who their God really is. So the, he's calling them to come to see who the God that they had forgotten truly is. The other gods did not show up. The challenge was that you call on your God, I call on my God. Whoever shows up by fire, that is going to be the God. And so Elijah is right here. And we're going to pick up from uh, verse 30. Elijah, the prophet of God, and the Bible says, and Elijah said to all of the people, all of Israel, God's people who had gone astray, he, Elijah said to all of the people, come near to me. And all of the people came near to Elijah and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. So first of all, if we're going to see who God is or who is the real God, we know that that God or their gods failed. And we're in an hour where everything is failing all around. Nothing. The God of mammon is not working anymore. 
And Elijah is going to call on the real God. But in order for us to see what God is going to do, we have to first come near. When I say come near, we have to come near with a humble heart and a broken and a contrite spirit. God is going to not ever deny a person that is going to be broken and humble. And so they came near to Elijah. And the first thing, the man of God who knew where the presence of God was, the first thing he did was, well, he built an altar. The Bible says, and he repaired the altar. He used, he repaired it. So repair means it's damaged, but I'm going to fix it. So the altar was repaired. That was the first thing. Where is your altar? Are you a desiring a move of God, but the altar that was once there is not there anymore? Well, if you're going to see the move of God, you're going to have to repair the altar. You're going to first have to come near and, and you have to come near with a broken and a contrite spirit. But you're going to have to go as far as finding a place that you can build for the Lord in your home, a place where the presence of God will come. And so he begins to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down. This altar was broken because they was worshiping other gods. They didn't even care for the things of God anymore. And I'm here today to tell you that people are going to run to the house of God. People are going to run to the presence of God. People are going to be looking for people that truly know who their God is. That is what Daniel said. He said, and they that know their gods will do great exalts. Why? Because the other altars that they built to Baal or to their gods or to their jobs or to their uh, uh, accomplishments, it did not work, especially in a time where there is a famine, especially in the, in, in the time where there is a drought and there is no move of God. People is going to be looking for what you have and what you know works. And the only thing that will work is an altar that is erected to the Lord. It cannot be broken down. It has to be utilized. And I just want to ask God to forgive us for anything that we've allowed to be broken down in our lives. Anything that we've allowed the enemy to take from us through distractions and all the kinds of other pursuits. Let us, your people, get back to the altar in Jesus name. Verse number 31, and Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. So why did I emphasize the word? Because Elijah took 12 stones to build the altar with, but it was the word of the Lord that said that those 12 stones would be the tribe or the children of Israel. So he based his altar on the word. Do you realize that when you go before the Lord and you humble yourself and you kneel at the altar, you have to stand on the word. Nothing else will endure but the word. Not one jot of the word shall fall to the ground. So Elijah being a man that is powerful, that know how to evoke the presence of God, he is repairing this altar, but he is also uh, using the 12 stones to build the altar. Those 12 stones represented the 12 tribes that God said through his word that they would be a nation. So what is God, what is uh, Elisha doing? He's trying to ask God to remember your word. You said that these people, no matter what they're doing, they're yours. So we are asking you to act upon your word and not to forget your word. You know, the Bible says to bring me in remembrance of my word. And that is what Elijah is doing. Verse number 32 says, and the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as wood contained two measures of seed. So the altar, he built it on the word, but he built it in the name. 
You know, those are two swords and uh, two, uh, of, of two of our weapons, the word of God and the name. We've got to use the name of Jesus. Everything that we ask the Lord for has to be in the name of Jesus. Without the name, there is nothing that can transpire. So he built the altar in the name of the Lord. Let's remember it's not in our name. Let's remember it's not in nothing that we can accomplish on our own, not by our might nor by our power, but it's truly by the spirit of God that we will be able to do what God has for us to do. And so he went as far as putting a trench around the altar as great as wood contains two measures of seed. So the trench was pretty thick. He, he put the altar in the middle, but he made sure, you know, when you're, you're uh, making a flower bed, you want to make sure that the, the garden have a trench for the seeds to go in. You close it up. That's what he did. He put a trench around the altar or the area for the altar. And, and basically he's being very dramatic. You know, I want you to understand that nothing is too hard for God. And so he's not being over dramatic because he's trying to uh, emphasize the significance and the importance of this God that he is serving so that you will then understand that that is the God that I've been missing out on. That is the God that I want to serve. Nobody's not going to want to serve your God if he's not the God, right? And so this is what Elijah is doing. And he put the wood in order and he put the wood in order. Everything that Elijah is doing here is symbolic of how we are to worship God. Why? Because everything should be done in decency and in order. You know, you got a lot of people doing a lot of things in the house of the Lord and online in the name of Jesus. And it's not in order. You know, we used to say, or the old people used to say, because I'm not old, y'all. The, the old people used to say, that's out of order. And I will call a spade a spade in a heartbeat. And a lot of things are out of order in the house of God. And if we don't stand up for what is right, like Elijah is, the young people that is coming behind us of the millennial generation, they won't know that it's out of order. But he put the wood in order. The wood is there for the altar. You have to have something to light under the fire, uh, uh, under the altar. So you can have the sacrifice, but you have to have that prayer. Prayer is was what's going to ignite the fire. And so he put the wood in order and he cut the bullets into pieces and he laid it on the wood. And he said and he said, fill four barrels with water. Now, buckets are small barrels are from the floor high. He said, fill four barrels with water. Now, you know, barrels are big, right? Where did he get water from? They were in a drought. They were starving. King Ahab told Obadiah, go look for some water for our cattle. Wherever there is water, there is going to be life and vegetation around the water. In the presence of the Lord, there is peace and fullness of joy. But they didn't have water and they didn't have food or rain. They didn't have the presence. But it just so happened that Elijah, the powerful man of God, he knew where the water was. I just want you to know that even though we are in a drought and in a weary land right now, famine is coming and prices is going up, the stock market and all of this stuff is happening all around us. There are people that know where there is water. These people were in dire need of the rain. It had not rained in three and a half years. And here Elijah is saying, take four buckets of water and pour it on 
the sacrifice and on the wood. Let's read it. And he said, he said, put, put, he put the wood in order. He's, uh, let me read the other part. He says, fill four barrels with water. Let's read that again. He says, fill, fill them up four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. This is what he did with the barrels. He poured it on the sacrifice. So the bullet got water on it. The wood got water on it. He filled those four barrels up. Okay. So basically what he is doing here, he is trying to make it be beyond impossible for this to be a coincidence for any old little G God to answer. And, and, and you know, when the stakes are high, that does not mean that God is not going to come through because your God is the God that will wake up the dead because he's a God of the living and not of the dead. Your God is the one that raised the little girl back to life. Your God is the one that calls Lazarus out of the grave with grave clothes on. And that is the God that we are serving. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the light. And so no matter how difficult things get, we know that God is the God that answers by fire. And so in verse number 34, he said, do it the second time. Wait a minute. Wait, what? He said, take four more barrels. We know y'all ain't got no water, but we know what a water is. We know what a presence of God is. He says, and, and do it again. He said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it even the third time. And the water ran about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. So here Elijah is saying there is nothing that is impossible for God. It doesn't matter if you're going through sickness. It doesn't matter if you're going through depression. It doesn't matter if your family is broken up. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're all alone. It doesn't matter if you lost everything. God is a restorer. He's a repairer of the breach. And so here... This man is saying, look at how strong and mighty the almighty is because I'm filling up four barrels and I'm of water and I'm saturating these sacrifices and the wood. And this is also symbolic of the fact that we don't just need a drink. We need to be saturated in the water. He is calling on the God that will answer by fire. But in order for us to see the power of God, which is the fire, everybody want to see the, the power of God. Everybody want to be able to move in the prophetic and they want to be, but they don't want the presence. See, the water has to come first because water is symbolic of washing. When you wash something, in water, it becomes clean and it also refreshes and renews. Israel was astray. There was no water. There was no rain. They wasn't worshiping God anymore. There was no presence of God in Israel. And so basically he is showing them symbolically that there need to be a drenching of the water without the water and the cleansing, the astringent of the water, wash us with the water of the word. Without the washing of the spirit and the presence of God, there cannot be any fire that will come down. So do you just want to see God's power, but you don't want his presence? You've got to understand the Holy Spirit of the fire of God represents the power, miracle signs and wonders. But if without God's presence, we won't see his power. Amen. So Elijah went there and he filled up all of those buckets of water. That was 12 buckets of water and uh, barrels. And he poured it and he drenched it. And he also filled the trenches with water as well. And it came to pass at the time of the evening 
offering of the of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet came near and said, first of all, notice that even though Elijah had done all of this stuff, he didn't proceed forward until it was the time of the evening sacrifice. And it came to pass at the time, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near. Do you realize that even though we do everything that we're supposed to do in order and everything, we still have to wait on God. Waiting on God causes us to have suspense and it builds suspense, excitement. Elijah waited. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Bible say they will mount up with wings of eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Do you realize that God is not going to do anything until he's good and ready? So Elijah knew that it was around the evening sacrifice that God was going to come in the midst of the people. So he waited. What is it that you have all together, but you're not waiting on God's timing? It has to be in God's timing. Though the vision tarry, the Bible says, wait on it because it's for an appointed time. And you're going to see the manifestation of what God has in store for you. I prophesy that to you by faith. If you have it, receive it by faith. Amen. And the Bible says here, he waited for the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You know, we usually say he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but God had changed their name. Israel was no, no longer considered Jacob. So it's in your identity that God has given to you that you're going to see magnification happen. They needed to see that this was their God. And so he calls out on the Lord God of Abraham. He called out on the Lord God of Isaac, but he called out on the Lord God of Israel. This was Israel and he's calling out up on the God of Israel, their God, the one that they have forgotten about, the God of their forefathers that they have forgotten about. And so he said, he said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. God is always going to be God, but is he God in you? Is he God in this nation? Is he God in your home? That's your choice. Because remember, they didn't have the presence of the Lord. They didn't have no water, but Elijah did. So we have to be able to know that God is God in our homes, on our streets, on our job, wherever we go. He is God, the God in Israel. He say, let it be known this day that you are the God in Israel and that you are that I am your servant. The reason why Elijah say, I need you to tell them that I am your servant because servants were are mistreated especially prophetic people. And a lot of times they stoned the prophets underneath this administration. They killed the prophets. Obadiah saved some of the prophets alive, but Ahab and Jezebel had killed the prophets. So he says, let them know that you are the God of Israel, but also let them know that I am your servant. And that I have done all of this at your word. You know, God is not going to back anything else up but his word. And as prophets, if we don't get back to preaching and prophesying what God is saying, nothing is going to come of it because nothing came of the prophets of Baal. And he says here, verse number 37, hear me, O Lord, hear me this day, people that that this people, that this people may know that you are the God and that you have turned their hearts back, uh, uh, their hearts back again. 
So basically, Elijah is standing as an intercessor um, between God and the people. He's saying, God, I'm bridging the gap back between you and the wayward people back together. He say, let them know that you are the God and that you are the one that is turning their hearts back to you again. We have to pray the will of God that the hearts of the people's uh, hearts will be turned back to him. The Bible say he that is wise wins souls. So if you call yourself a prophet, if you call yourself a man or woman of God or a child of God, our desire and uh, the heart of God is to bring people back to his the place of the cross and to come back to God and to begin to seek him because it is not the desire that any man would perish. And, and let's go on because I'm running out of time. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifices and the wood and the stones and the dust and lit up the water that was in the trench. And when all of the people, when all of the people saw they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. You know, when we show up with a refreshing uh, drink of water, barrels full, people are in a drought and in a weary land, honey, they will get to the place that they will see what you have. And they say, they will say that he is the God. These people repented and God is desiring us to demonstrate his power in our lives in this dark and dying generation. And they will turn back to the Lord. If you are on this broadcast, I hope and pray that you come to Jesus by way of repenting on today. All you have to do is repeat this prayer and believe in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I am in need of a savior. I ask that you will come into my heart. I ask that you would cleanse me and wash me, purge me from all of my sin. I confess that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, that you died and you were buried. And on the third day, you rose again and you are now making intercession for me. Please write my name on your Lamb's Book of Life. I want to be born again. Thank you for watching The Fueling Station. We know that you were immensely blessed by this rich and uncompromised Word of God. Tune in each week for more teachings by Apostle Catherine Price. Also, to contact us or to learn more about our ministries, visit our website at kpriceministries.com. That's kpriceministries.com. See you next week at this same time, and may God richly bless you.